everybody. Can you believe it? This is our very last week of the Fab Five series. During the Fab Five, we are looking at five fabulous prophets from the Old Testament. After God's people moved to the Promised Land, they forgot all about him. So God sent some prophets to warn his people about the future destruction that was coming if they didn't turn back to him. Hmm. Who were the first two of the Fab Five? Eli Elisha and Elijah. That's right. It was Elijah and Elisha. God sent them to warn the ten northern tribes, the nation of Israel. And who was the third? J it starts with J Jonah. God sent Jonah to warn the foreign town of Nineveh. And who was the fourth? It was the sad one. Uh, Jeremiah. That's right. God sent Jeremiah to warn the two southern tribes, the nation of Judah. Unfortunately, the nations of Israel and Judah couldn't answer, to, wouldn't listen to God or his prophets. So God allowed them to be defeated and the people were forced to leave the promised land. Today, we're going to hear a ton of fabulous things about the last of the Fab Five prophets. There was a man named Daniel. Mm -hmm. But first, I want you to think of a fabulous talent you have. Huh. Have you ever done anything fabulous? Or do you have any fabulous talents you can show off? Be sure to show someone in your family yours today. If you like, you can even send us a video. I absolutely know our grandkids are fabulous. Believe it or not, we all have some fabulous talents mm -hmm. and abilities. And it would be pretty easy for us to take the credit for those talents and abilities. But the story of Daniel might make you think twice before you do that. Are you ready to check it out? Great. You will need your Daniel and the Deadly Dream comic sheet and something to draw with. Remember, if you need more time, just press pause on the video. And here is Doug. Now on the first panel, I would like you to draw chains on the people's hands and on the people's feet. After the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, the people of Judah were taken away to the enemy land of Babylon, where they, where they were made to serve King Nebuchadnezzar. Among them is a prophet named Daniel, and he had three friends by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel and his friends had a ton, and I mean a ton, of fabulous abilities. They were strong. They were handsome. I can't do handsome, but they were handsome and they were smart. God has also given Daniel the ability to know the meaning of dreams. Now, when King Nebi hears about their talents, he invites them to try out for his royal court. For three years, Daniel and his friends are trained on the language and the ways of the Babylonian people. After that, they can impress King Neb more than the other students and they will get to serve as his royal advisors. I now need you to draw food and cups on the table in panel number two. While being trained, the royal students are allowed to eat and allowed to drink from the king's very own table, the best food and the best wine in all of the kingdom. But there's just one problem. The food has been dedicated to a false Babylonian god, so Daniel asks the chief official for a favor. He says, my God forbids me from eating food dedicated to other gods. Can you please allow me and my friends to eat only vegetables and only drink water? But the official is worried. He says, no way, you'll become weak and the king will have my head. But Daniel doesn't give up. Test us for 10 days. If we are weaker than the other students, then we'll do what you say. God had given Daniel favor among the officials, so the official finally ag agrees, and after 10 days, not only does Daniel and his friends look healthier than the others, but they also look away better. So for the next three years, the official continues giving Daniel and his friends vegetables and water, and God continues giving them wisdom and knowledge. When the three years of training is over, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are brought to King Nebi, who is really impressed. None of the other students are as wise or as knowledgeable as Daniel and his friends. So the king chooses them 
over all the others to be his official advisors. When King Neb needs wisdom or knowledge, he calls for Daniel and his friends, and their answer are ten times better than all the other supposedly really wise men. The four men of Judah are like a dream team of wisdom who showed up just in the time, just in time for the nightmare. Now, I need you to draw King Neb in his pajamas talking to his, talking to his advisors in panel number three. One night, King Neb wakes up really troubled. He calls his Babylonian advisors and he says to them, I had a bad dream. I want you to tell me what this dream means, but first you have to tell me what I dreamt about. <laughs> the advisors gave him a really puzzled look and said, Your Highness, no one on earth could possibly know what you dreamt about. When the king hears their answer, he becomes furious with them and he gives the order to have all of his advisors, including Daniel, including Daniel's friends, put to death. When word reaches Daniel about the king's order, he knows that he has to act quickly to save the life of his friends. So he gathers Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego together, and that very night they pray to God to tell Daniel all about the dream. And guess what? It works. God gives Daniel a vision and reveals to him the mystery of the dream. As soon as he can, Daniel goes to King Neb and he says to the king, Your Majesty, there is no man who can tell you about your dream, but there is a God in heaven who can. I know the answer to this mystery, not because of my great wisdom, but because the Lord told me. You now need to draw a picture of a giant statue in panel number four. Daniel then explains to the king that his dream was about a giant, huge, massive statue. The head of the statue was made of pure gold. The chest and the arms were made of silver, the stomach and the thighs were made of bronze, and the, and the legs were made of iron, and the feet, well, they were made of clay. Suddenly, a giant rock smashed into the statue's feet and broke it into pieces. Can you now draw a large rock smashing into the feet of the statue in panel number four? Daniel then goes on to explain what that dream means. The head of the head of gold stands for your kingdom. Many lesser kingdoms will come after you, but one day all of these kingdoms will be crushed to pieces and will, God will set up his own kingdom that will last forever. Well, the king can't believe it. With the help of God, Daniel has done something that no one else could. The king says to Daniel, your God is the greatest of them all. He gave you this great talent of yours, and because of the gift that God has given Daniel, his life is spared along with the life of Shadrach, the life of Meshach, and the life of Abednego. And from that day forward, Daniel is made ruler over the city of Babylon and put in charge of all the other wise men. Okay, kids, talk about talent. We've got some pretty talented people right in those living rooms. But Daniel and his friends had a ton of talent. Do you remember some of the talents and abilities that Danny, Daniel and his friends had? Oh, goodness. They were strong. Yes. They were pretty smart. Yep. And they could understand dreams. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Daniel was so talented that it would have been really easy for him to say, Oh, yeah, I'm awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm awesome. Look at me. Wanna be. Okay. Is that what he did though? No. When Daniel talked to the king, he told him that it was God who had given him his ability to understand dreams. Daniel could have taken the credit for himself, but instead he gave God the glory. Do you know what the word glory means? That's right. When you give God the glory, it means that you give him honor and praise. It means that you give him the credit for all of your gifts and talents. Giving God glory means that you shine a spotlight on him instead of yourself. Let me show you what I mean. When you're in a dark room and somebody shining, starts shining a light on you, where do you naturally want to look? That's right. Your eyes naturally want to look at wherever the light is shining. I can draw your attention to whatever I want just by shining my light on it. 
like this. The letter A, the lightning bolt, the Bible, or even my silly face. That's how it is with giving glory. If I always talk about how awesome I am, who am I shining the light on? That's right, I'm shining it on me. I'm glorifying myself. But if I, like Daniel, tell people that my gifts and talents come from God, who am I shining the light on then? You got it. I'm shining the light on God. Above who gives us every good thing. And that reminds me of our Bible verse for today. So let's take a look at our Bible and look up James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Not some gifts or most gifts, every gift. Every good and perfect gift is from God above. That means your family, your friends, your food, your house, even your talents and abilities. They all came from God above. We live in a world that is filled with sin and darkness. And when we give God the glory for our gifts and talents, we shine the light on him that the people around us can know that our God is the greatest. We draw attention to him and help them fall in love with him instead of us. In fact, that's what happened with King Nebuchadnezzar because Daniel gave God the glory and shine the light on him. King Nebuchadnezzar declared that God is the greatest God of all. He is the Lord of all kings. When we do something awesome, like Daniel did, it's so easy to want to take the credit for ourselves. Hmm. But the next time someone praise you or ask you where you got your talent from, tell them it comes from God. Who knows? Maybe they will start to wonder more about God. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they will start to ask questions about God. Or maybe they will even start believing in the greatest, most perfect gift that God above has given us, Jesus. Let me pray for us. Father, we pray that we give you all of the glory, that we don't look at the things that we have as ours, but as yours. We thank you so much for blessing us. Amen. Next week, remember, it's December. If you don't have your grandkids box, remember to register. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to send a pic of your challenge card so we can get your prize out to you. And we are also proud of all of you who have completed all the challenges. That make us so happy. It does. And now, well, I think we just need to remind you that your activity number five should be done with your family sometime this week, even today. We will be back next week with our Christmas series. Light Yay. it up. We are so excited. Yes. So stay warm and take care until next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.